Mike, great to have you. I know we're actually sitting down to talk about the new aircraft carrier that's getting christened as well. But first, I need to start with this news of the day. Uh, the fact that you did just receive with General Dynamics this award for more Virginia class submarines. How will that impact the company? What does that mean? Well, that's a very, um, first of all, thanks for having me again today, Morgan. It's great to be with you all. The, the uh, contract last night uh, establishes the rhythm for submarine production over the next decade, uh, helps us balance the Virginia class program with the startup of the Columbia program. And since there's significant overlap in our supply chain between the submarines and the aircraft carriers, uh, it goes well with the two aircraft carrier contract that we got back at the beginning of this year. Uh, all of that pushes our backlog up close to $50 billion. Wow. And speaking of that aircraft carrier, uh, the Kennedy, it's the second in the Ford class. It's scheduled to be christened later this week. First christening for an aircraft carrier in six years. It's a $13 billion ship. Let's talk about the significance of this milestone and what this class of aircraft carrier is going to bring to the Navy that previous ones haven't. Well, as you know, this is the second ship of the Ford class, and the, the Ford class was, is a redesign of the aircraft carrier uh, ship after 40 years of executing um, uh, design. So we, if you think about all the things in your life that have changed over the last 40 years, uh, we've been able to incorporate most of those into the, into the, the daily activity of this ship. Uh, things like using electricity for heating spaces instead of using steam. Uh, all of that leads to reducing uh, the maintenance cost of the ship. It reduces the manning on the ship. We've been able to take advantage of the technologies to make the ship more lethal in terms of sortie rate. Um, and so all of that comes to bear with a 40-year uh, gap in design. Uh, what's significant about the Kennedy is that we are now moving from the Ford, which was the first of the class, uh, into production. Um, and what that means is uh, the first ship is, uh, is as the lead ship. It's not just a production unit. It's also a prototype where you're testing out your design, you're testing out your, your training plans and your labor plans and your supply chains, and you're doing all of those things. And now on the Kennedy, we've been able to move past the prototype phase. We're actually into production, which then led the success we've had on Kennedy in terms of efficiencies um, encourage the Navy to move ahead with another two ships after the Kennedy. And so we're really excited about where this uh, puts the program and it puts our business and it helps put the Navy uh, on a good footing for the next decade. Yeah, and that black buy is certainly getting a, a lot of attention earlier in the year as well. But just to dig into that a little bit more, Mike, that first in class, the USS Ford, it's been the subject of pretty fierce criticism, delays, ballooning costs. It's believed by some analysts to be the source of the, quote, large cost overruns that are referenced by President Trump in his tweets about the former, now former Navy Secretary Richard Spencer uh, when, when he was fired last week as well. How are you getting your arms around some of those issues? And what does that mean in terms of production for these future ships? Well, in our discussion with the Navy, uh, we were pretty clear that, um, you know, the very first ship of the class is, as I said before, is a prototype, and you're testing out all of the things that you think will work, uh, but then you have to adjust as you discover going forward uh, what did work and what didn't work. Uh, what we did then was, uh, based on the things that we saw in the first ship production, uh, in the building of the first ship, uh, we made significant capital investments in the business to reduce the cost of the ship and allow us to put it together more efficiently. Uh, we're, very, we're very happy with the returns that we're getting on that. Uh, and then we had a discussion with the Navy, and actually Secretary Spencer led this effort to move beyond the how do you build it better, now how can you buy it smarter? And so um, his leadership yeah. actually uh, drove the issue to get the two-carrier buy done. So it's been a step process. You, from prototype to efficiency to buy it smarter. Um, and I think that uh, that's why we're where we are today. On a day where NATO is very much in focus with President Trump and other Lido leaders meeting in London right now, increased def defense spending from allies has definitely been a growth, a growth driver for a number of defense contractors. How are you thinking about the opportunity where international sales are concerned for Huntington Ingalls? Yeah, uh, defense, uh, I, I understand the international piece of the defense market. For shipbuilding, it's a little bit different. Um, 
you know, for shipbuilders, countries want to build their own ships. And so while they're more than happy to talk with us about our designs and maybe some of our, um, our leadership skills and things like that, they really want to have the, the place where they build the ships in country because that typically is, that's how they create the jobs, that's how they create their own supply chains. And so the international piece of, of our business is very, very small. It's not in shipbuilding, it's really over in our services piece where we do a little bit of work there uh, internationally. But, but it's not a significant part of who we are as a company. Uh, just a few moments ago, we got more comments from President Trump regarding China and IP theft, especially in the midst of this trade deal that is uh, trying to be worked out right now. I know this is a topic you and I have discussed before, this idea of IP theft. It, it's been perhaps most significantly documented uh, where defense is concerned and particularly the Navy supply chain. How do you think about that? How big of an, of an issue is it? And would you expect some sort of trade deal to actually change, change that security threat? Yeah, I, that's a really good question, and I think the jury's out. I, I'm not sure the trade negotiations uh, go hand in hand with, the, with the, uh, the cyber issues that we've been dealing with from a security standpoint. You know, we have to, we have to work really hard to protect our designs from any sort of intrusions. Um, and then, and then what we have to move to is we have to be able to protect our suppliers as well. And so, to 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 our way of thinking, that's that's a whole separate issue from any sort of uh, any sort of trade alliance or trade agreement that we might be making with the Chinese. I, I think that we've we know that we've been under attack from multiple sources for many years. Uh, companies have gotten better at this. Uh, we've certainly gotten a lot better at this over the last decade. Uh, but that threat continues to change every day. And, uh, and so we continue to step into it and try to stay in front of it.